Hey, Randy Joe here, and this is 1001 Reviews, where I plan on listening to every album from the 1001 albums to listen to before you die. And today we are looking at Duran Duran's 1982 album, Rio. According to the book of 1001 albums to listen to before you die, Rio, released by Duran Duran in 1982, was produced under the EMI label under Colin Thurston, with art direction by Malcolm Garrett, nationality UK and a running time of 42 minutes and 19 seconds. Well, unpopular opinion as far as I know, but I'll say it. Duran Duran sucks. I said it. Duran Duran is not a good band. And their hits, a couple of which come from this album, are rather weak hits at that. And luckily, the song Ordinary World by Duran Duran is not off of this album because if it is, I would have to begrudgingly sit through that terrible, awful song and pretend as if there is something to even say about it. Because that song is about as bottom of a barrel as a hit can get. Must have been a very slow year when that song became a hit. But I digress. What we do get on Rio is a mix of very synth-heavy pop songs that were designed very purely to appeal to a club audience. But because of its heavy synths and pop aspects, it feels very much a product of its time and is extremely dated towards today's standards. I mean, you listen to this thing and you know instantly that it is an 80s record and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Rio, the first track, is a metaphor for Duran Duran's desire to achieve success in America, and Rio, the girl that they sing of in this song, is America in their eyes. And even though this one is dated, like many of the tracks on here, I do find this one to be one of the more enjoyable tracks on the album, and definitely their best hit. It's very upbeat and fun, without being as annoying as some of their other upbeat and fun songs, such as Hungry Like a Wolf. And Hungry Like a Wolf remains a complete enigma to me as I don't really understand the appeal whatsoever to that song. I find it often to be quite annoying more than anything else, filled with repetitive drumming that isn't all that appealing on its own, and rather uncomfortable bleep bloops that constantly shift back and forth that don't really add anything to the track either. It is an earworm to the worst degree. Another song, Last Chance on the Stairway, is rather one note and feels very much the same as the rest of the tracks on here doing very little to shift style or direction but is actually less upbeat than the other tracks on here and because of that takes away any fun factors that at least the other songs had and ends up being a rather boring track an incredibly boring track in my opinion songs like that and much of the songs on this album do make up for what is to me a very huge snore fest of an album. I mean, this thing is rather bland and generic as far as 80 pop albums are concerned. But this album does have two things, two very strong things going for it in my opinion. One, the song New Religion is quite catchy and quite enjoyable and I enjoy the chorus, but more often than not, the best thing about New Religion is the bass line. If you want proof of what I mean, skip to the last third of New Religion and you will hear the bass line take over, shifting out the vocals and it's instead soloing over the track here, showing off just how amazing the bass playing is. And the bass playing all over this album is also pretty enjoyable, but on this song it is especially unique and standout-ish. I think much of what is enjoyable about this album wouldn't be there. I mean, I think so much of the strengths lie on the bass playing, especially on New Religion. The second thing this album definitely has going for it is the last track, The Chauffeur, which is by far the best track on here. Because who would have thought that after all of these incredibly mediocre and bland pop synth tracks, The Chauffeur would be something that would come into existence because The Chauffeur is a fantastic song. Definitely by far the best one on the album. The Chauffeur kind of moves away from the pop orientation and instead becomes more ominous and mysterious in tone, going for a much darker approach with the shifting synths that go back and forth and continually build in the background, while in the foreground the singing is much more atmospheric and creepy in a way. 
There's even flutes that come into this song as well and play quite strongly and really add to the track. And towards the last third of the track, you get this nice mix of instrumentation that is definitely by far the best bits of the album coming together. I think if this entire album went the direction that the chauffeur took, then what we would have gotten would have been a far more unique and original album with a lasting impact. Get rid of the poppiness, get rid of the club hits, get rid of the fun instead, replace it with the dark, ominous, creepy, atmospheric tone, and you would have a much more interesting, unique, and original album for it. But sadly, that's not the case, and instead, what we got is what we got. A rather run-of-the-mill, standard, generic, 80s pop hit album full of club bangers that are meant to be a product of its time. So because of that, the soft rating of this album for me came in at a 5.3, but I will harden this rating down to a 4.5. Yes, that is quite a steep drop, but I do believe it is well-deserved because there isn't really a whole lot going for this album. It is quite meh as far as albums go. If I were to sum up this album, I would say, fuck Duran Duran, all my homies hate Duran Duran. Also, not essential. This thing is not essential in the slightest. So listen to the chauffeur, drop the rest, doesn't matter at all. That pretty much does it for this video. Thanks for watching my review on Duran Duran's Rio. And let's go ahead and see which album we are going to listen to next from the 1001 albums to listen to Before You Die book. Next album we listen to is number 924, which is Goten Project. The Revanche del Tango. So watch next week for a review of that album coming out next week, Tuesday. And on Friday, this Friday, we will have Casanova by The Divine Comedy being reviewed, which be sure to watch out for that because I do have quite a bit to say there. Please like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you want to follow along in listening to every single album from the 1001 Albums to Listen To Before You Die book. Link in the description to follow along with that list. This has been Randy Joe, signing off.